liberal MP Khaled starts a fight with the chair of the committee, instantly regrets it. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. MP Iker Khaled is a member of the Ethics Access to Information Committee, and she's always starting trouble, always looking for a, a beef, as they would say. She's always trying to stir up trouble. And in this example, it's no different. I mean, they literally were just sitting down. The chair had just hit the gavel, and this is how she opened the committee. I mean, it is. <laughs> it's so funny. Go ahead on the point of order. Um, I would like to seek uh, two clarifications from you. Number one. Um, with respect to uh, a status update on Twitter documents uh, and uh, at some point in, in today's meeting, okay. um, but, but also uh, with respect to how do you decide who gets recognized in this committee? I have had my hand raised on multiple occasions, and I know that I've been the first person to have raised my hand on meeting after meeting after meeting, and yet you don't recognize me. I'm just wondering, can we count on your nonpartisanship as, yes, you uh, as can, chair of this uh, you can, uh, I'm not done Ms. talking, Khalid. Mr. Chair. You can, Ms. Khalid. I've recognized Mr. Barrett to start because his the hand meeting was meeting hasn't... No. Nope, I, I soon as the gavel drop, you can challenge me if you like. Challenge me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. That was that was really really enjoyable. <laughs> but it didn't stop there. That's absolutely fine. But I would like an update as to why we have committee business today when we have so many motions that uh, that we've ha had to go through uh, and so many uh, issues that uh, that we needed to to get through and yet we're having another committee business meeting today which doesn't help us understand because we haven't seen any work plans from you we haven't seen any witness lists from you we haven't seen how we are going to conduct ourselves with respect to all of these motions and i don't understand why we had a committee so i was going to update the committee uh before no, you, your point you, no, of order clear, chair clearly yeah. you passed the floor to mr barrett well, which is your right absolutely yeah. Yeah. you know because you you only see that side of of the floor great good for you but i I would like to know um, what exactly it is that we're doing here. Uh, if we're having a committee business meeting, then I would like to know what is the committee's business from you, Chair, from all of these motions that we've passed, with all of these witnesses that we've submitted on all of these various studies, and yet we have no no idea as to, to what it is that we're doing, except for calling motion after motion yeah, and so just only referring to Mr. Barrett. To, Mr. You Barrett might as question? well be... You want me to answer the question? Mr. Barrett might as well be the chair of this committee. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, so the, uh, the committee business was to update the committee on uh, where we're at with witnesses. We had some challenges. Uh, based on the fact that uh, the motion was passed last Tuesday on the CRA. So as it stands right now, uh, I wanted to update the committee that on the 19th, uh, we've got uh, the Privacy Commissioner scheduled. We have got H&R Block, so we just couldn't get anybody scheduled for today. H&R uh, Block uh, is also scheduled. And then on the 21st, we're still waiting to hear from the Minister. The request has been made to have the Minister appear before the committee, and then we're going to have the Commissioner of the CRA. The challenge is that uh, some of the uh, commissioners are out of the country, and uh, uh, so we've been able to schedule those for the week of the 19th when we get back. I've got Mr. Barrett followed by Mr. Vilmure. Go ahead, Mr. Barrett, please. How embarrassing that must have been for her. <clears throat> but I don't think that she is embarrassed. I, I don't believe that people with her psychological disposition get that kind of, but they don't understand that the world around them is mocking them or the, that they're acting out of, the, out of uh, what's appropriate, what's socially uh, acceptable. If you were to take somebody like, I don't know, let's say Jordan Peterson, and you were to play this kind of interaction with her, I'm pretty sure that he would say that she's um, acting out for attention. Like, she doesn't care what kind of attention it is, just as long as she's getting attention. She says that she's got one issue, a point of order. She opens with point of order, like the second, right? Then she complains that she is not getting heard. Then she says that she um, he's favoring the other side of the house. Then she says, oh, why are we here talking about committee business when we have all of these motions in front of us? 
Then she says to him that, you know, she tries again to dig at him. I mean, she's just all over the place, right? For the first like three minutes of the entire committee meeting, she's just simply complaining and talking to him about all of the, well, like, I mean, where there were, there wasn't really anything of any substance in there that couldn't have been taken care of in about a split second or even, you know, in one sentence, but she just was looking for a fight, right? And because she did it right out of the gate, because she came in there with a chip on her shoulder into the, she obviously had that in her mind when she came into the room, Never mind when she probably said, oh, she got committee today. And she probably started thinking about how she's going to start trouble. She's always starting trouble in these committees. It screams unprofessional and it screams um, young, you know, like it, it doesn't necessarily represent that of a mature mindset now i'll say it once and I've, I've said it once and i'll say it again i don't know how these guys get elected i don't know who in their mind said let me vote for that person who can't really do anything but but start to look for caustic ways to to go about her job i mean it's always some chip on her shoulder it's either you're not bipartisan or you don't like girls or you don't like, like it's always something. It's not that they, the, the person just doesn't agree with her. It's always got to be some other reason. MP Barrett couldn't have, uh, you know, been putting his hand up first because she said so. Right. And MP Brassard can't be um, impartial because she said so. And you heard Barrett make a dig at her. Oh, is that a nomination? Like, you know, they, they, they don't take her seriously because she's, you know, because she's not to be taken seriously. She, there's nothing about what she ever does or says that is to be taken seriously. It's always just wasting time. And I don't know what she, what her end goal is. I mean, I think psychologically the end goal is that she just wants to be noticed. I think that in committee, she has a, a bigger microphone as opposed to what she might have in the house of commons where she always tries to stand up in the house of commons too. And, and make uh, member statements and stuff like that. But once the ball stalls rolling on question period, you don't hear from her. And it could be that she just wants to be out front, wants to be noticed. Could be that she just thinks that it'll make her a good soundbite. Though I don't know how she could salvage a good soundbite out of that. I mean, I get that you could widow it down so that only you are the one talking. Maybe that's something that they do on TikTok. I don't, I don't watch TikTok to all. I don't know. But I can tell you that this person came in with an agenda, then she got sat down, and rather than say, okay, you know what, you've answered my question, she just asked another question, and another question, and she just kept trying to keep her the focus on her for no matter what she said, like nothing, no consistency in what she said, but she wanted to have the, the room all on her, the, the attention put toward her, which is why I think that there's something there about being the center of attention as opposed to being a hard hitting, you know, tough as nails politician who's looking out for the constituencies or who's looking out for the job in front of her. I mean, ethics and privacy is a big topic in today's day and age. And she's treating it like it's a clown show. Like she's at the cafeteria having lunch. What is it with the far left that they don't want to be serious and, and, and direct and mature about their approach? I don't know. Like I, I'm not schooled like, uh, say, a Jordan Peterson or some sort of psychologically trained individual. I can see, though, that this person is – there was no substance to what she had to say, and she just kept talking which is to me the only thing that makes any sense is that she just wants to be the center of attention. She doesn't care what that attention is. She doesn't care if it's good attention or if it's bad attention, as long as it's hers. And somebody elected her to be put out in front of their constituency. Think about that. Somewhere in this country, in Toronto, there's a region that considers her their voice in Parliament. It is a strange juxtaposition, in my mind, anyway. To me, anyway. Of course, you can let me know what you think down in the comments. I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.